years ago when I started to get into film photography and medium format photography, I was really confused. I started out in 35mm film, I went into digital, but I never really tried medium format film. I never totally understood it. So when I started to get into it, a lot of it seemed very kind of confusing in a way. Uh, there were so many different formats, and then when you looked at digital medium format, nothing really started to make sense. So I did a lot of research, and eventually after a while I figured it out. But if you're one of those new photographers that started in digital and is getting into film photography and is seriously considering medium format photography, you really, really should get into it. And here's what you need to help you out. First off, know your formats. Digital medium format photography has pretty different formats from film medium format photography. The largest in digital medium format photography is what's called True 645. But then you also have sensors that are smaller than that, but larger than 35mm full frame. For example, the sensors in the Hasselblad X1D and the new Fujifilm GFX50S, and then a few other medium format bodies out there from Hasselblad, uh, Phase 1, etc. A bunch of those are not totally the same as medium format film photography. Medium format film photography has totally different formats. There's true 645. There is 6x6, which is a square format. There's 6x7, which a lot of medium format photographers and film photographers consider that true medium format because it's in between large format and small format, which is 35mm. Then there is 6x8, which is a little bit more rare. And then 6x9. 6x9 is actually personally my favorite. Then you can go larger. You can go to 6x12. Um, I've even seen some larger formats than that, but they're really hard to do. 645 format is what digital medium format photography is most adapted to. Then when you actually look at 645 medium format photography, a lot of film photographers will actually not really like that format, but in truth it's actually still a very good format. This is a roll of medium format film, and it works completely different than a roll of 35mm film. Most 35mm films, when you get them in, there are 36 exposures of some sort, and if it's a consumer film, then there's probably 24 exposures. But with medium format, you get one roll of film, and you use it in a different way no matter what. The 645 format of medium format photography will give you the most images, but the smallest area of the film. 66 will give you a little bit less images, but you'll also get a little bit more. It's a true square format. 67 will give you even larger, but you'll get less, and 6x9 typically gives you like 8 shots per roll. So if you can actually sit there and say to yourself, hey, I can get this photo in eight shots, or I can get eight excellent photos, then fine, go ahead and go for 6.9. Other than that, actually, 6.45 is a pretty awesome bang for your buck format. You can get really, really amazing images with a 6.45 medium format camera and lenses. So what should you start on? Well, I really recommend everyone starts on 6.45 format. It's the smallest and it's the most forgiving, and there are the most cameras out there. Um, back in the film days, a lot of wedding photographers actually used the 645 medium format systems to shoot weddings, and then some of them used it for documentary work and other stuff. In studios, they used 69 or they used uh, 67. 67 is actually very popular for headshots. So, what about the types of cameras? There are typically two different types of medium format cameras. This is a Fujifilm GW693. This is a rangefinder style body. It's got a fixed lens. There are some with interchangeable lenses in the rangefinder format, but not a lot really. And the rangefinders tend to be uh, a little bit more expensive. And then you also can't really get the fullest benefit out of them when it comes to using something like a graduated ND filter because you're looking through the rangefinder and you don't really know how much of the lens is truly being covered when you're trying to expose that sky and the land in an even way. 
This medium format RB67 Pro S though is the more SLR style camera body. And these come in various uh, configurations. You can have a grip on the left hand side and you can have a bunch of other things. There are obviously other lenses, but then you also have these finders. There is an actual prism finder that can be used and this is the top-down finder that you can use. But one of the coolest things about medium format SLRs is the fact that you can switch out the camera back just like that. This will hold a piece of 120 film and you can make notes by taking a little piece of uh, the film's packaging and putting it somewhere like here. And then you could say to yourself, okay, this back has Tri-X 400 in it, another back has Portra 160 in it, and then you can go in between and you could say, hey, I think I'm done shooting Portra 160, I'm going to go back to shooting Tri-X. That's pretty cool, and that also allows photographers to have a lot more versatility. Another thing worth mentioning has to do with crop factor and depth of field. When you go from a 35mm full format sensor down to APS-C, most APS-C sensors will give you a 1.5 times crop factor. The way it works is you take the focal length and then you multiply it by a certain number. Sometimes it's 2, sometimes it's 1.5, sometimes 1.6. It really varies. With medium format, it's the reverse. You start with this 75 millimeter lens, for example, on medium format 645. And then you translate that to 35, and it's more like a 50 or a 40 normal lens. And then you go up to 6x9, and you take a 90 millimeter lens, and what you're getting is something like a 38 millimeter field of view in 35 millimeter photography. The same thing affects your apertures and your f-stops. So with 6x9 medium format, if you take a 90mm f3.5 lens and you try to convert it to 35mm, what you're going to get is something around 38mm f1.2 in terms of depth of field. So there's very, very small amounts of area that's actually in focus. And the reason for that has to do with the larger area overall. Just imagine that this area here is your camera sensor. This is significantly larger than 35 millimeter full frame. So with that in mind, what that's also going to mean is that f5.6 on this versus 35 millimeter full frame will have a lot less in focus comparatively. Medium format photography really requires you to have tripods and flashes or monolights. The reason why is because you need extra stability most of the time, and in addition to that, sometimes you don't always have enough light, so you need to add it with flashes. 35mm full frame film photography is also sometimes the same case, but not as much with medium format. Medium format lenses, when it comes to the apertures, are typically slower than most 35mm equivalents. I mean, in 645, the fastest lens possible, I think, is f1.8, which is super narrow depth of field, and I think it is part of the contact 645 lineup. But when you get to something bigger, like 6.9 or something like that, maybe f2, maybe f2.8, maybe f2.5, not really a whole lot. But it means that your options are much less, and you can also probably get less light from your scene. So you need to find a way to stabilize the camera and shoot at a slower shutter speed, or you need to find a way to add more light with a flash. And sometimes that can mean adding multiple flashes. For strobus photographers and for people that shoot landscapes, that's not really a problem. Actually, medium format is better suited to these types of photography than something like uh, photojournalism or street photography. Uh, that can be actually be really tough. The reason why that's so tough is because most of the cameras that have autofocus really can't keep up with fast-moving subjects unless you're pretty far away and you're stopped down quite a bit. 
but then you have to think about your ISO is locked, can you really stop the motion with a fast shutter speed, and do you have enough light overall if you added a flash or anything else like that. It can get kind of complicated, and that's why most medium format work is done portrait style or landscape style. Quick last tip. High ISOs aren't very common. So in 35mm film format photography, there are higher ISOs available. There's like Ilford Delta 3200, which you're supposed to rate at like 1600 instead. And film does have a lot of high ISOs when it comes to medium format, but not a whole lot. I mean, in color, you're probably going to get ISO 800 at most, and in black and white, probably around the same. So that means that, generally speaking, you are going to be shooting with less light than you probably would in digital, unless you have conditioned your mind to shoot the way that film photographers would with your digital camera. And that can be tough, but it takes a lot of work, and when you finally do get there, then it, the rewards are actually very nice. Not only for your hard drives, because you're shooting less, but also for you, because it means that you spend less time in, like, Capture One or Lightroom, and more time actually going out there shooting. What are your tips for shooting medium format film? If you have any, please share them in the comments below, and thanks a lot for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to The Full Blogger on YouTube as well. Thanks a lot.